Well, oh <laughs> thank you all for coming. This is um, the Women in Open Source panel, so you are in the right spot, even though slides are not working. Um, so I'm Mary Cochran. I've been with Red Hat about four and a half years. Um, I'm a senior middleware consultant, and I'm moving to an SA position soon. Um, yeah, so I have a computer science background. Um, how did I get into open source? So that's one question we're going to answer as we go through the intros is how we got into open source. When I was in college, um, I was planning a wedding, and I needed some free photo editing. And so I found out about open source that way and got into using GIMP and um, some other open source tools to design some of our things, and then um, ended up at Red Hat. So this is Lizzie. Oh, I have this. Oh, you have that. <laughs> Sorry. I have a mic. Um, hi, guys. My name is Lizzie Matusev. Um, I'm a consultant with Red Hat. Um, I've been here for about under two years, a little under two years. Um, I'm actually trained in molecular biology, but I got really excited about computer science and open source, and so now I'm here. Um, my first experience with open source was um, in college. I really wanted to learn about tech and about business, and so um, I got connected with this company in Los Angeles, and they were working with OpenESB products, um, and that was kind of my first exposure into open source, and I thought, wow, like, people collectively working together to solve a problem, what a concept. Um, and that's really what led me down the path towards, you know, reaching out to Red Hat and being here now. Okay, so I'm Christina Lin. I am the technical marketing manager. So basically what I do is evangelizing my product, and my, my product is the integration product, middleware products. Um, so how did I get started with open source? So um, I used to work for AIG for a long time, and I was the head architect at, at the point. And then we bought a very expensive stuff from, from IBM, so they were supposed to integrate with that. And at the end, the problem is nobody can get it working, and the consultant they provided was, was not giving enough instructions. But we are on a deadline of providing an integration project and getting it done. So I end up researching on the internet and find out like, my, my favorite camel project, and I kind of just pull that down and trying to, like, because at the time, there's no more budget for me to actually <laughs> use, so I have to get something that's free. Um, so that's how I ended up using an open source project. <laughs> yeah. You want to go, Lucy? Lucy Kerner, Lucy Kerner um, I am a, um, also a technical marketing manager, uh, but I don't uh, focus on a product. I'm in the security uh, product, uh, product por uh, portfolio team focusing on security across all of Red Hat's products. Uh, and uh, how the, so I've been at Red Hat a little over four years. I spent mo um, most of that time actually as a senior solution architect in US government uh, for, for our cloud technologies. Spent three years doing that, uh, and then I've been about in this role about a year. I got started in open source uh, in college. Also, um, we have a. I went to college in Carnegie Mellon. And I studied engineering, um, co computer engineering there, and we uh, had a mailing list, like a very Unix style ma mailing list. And uh, one, they were saying, "I'm giving away like this computer. It's Slackware. Compute has Slackware on it." And I was like, oh, "This is kind of cool. Maybe I'll learn Linux this way." So and it was giving away it for free. So I said, "Okay, why not?" So that, you know, that's kind of my one of my first uh, exposure to my own kind of system, things like that. So, um, hi, I'm Laura Abbott. Uh, I'm a Fedora kernel engineer. I'm one of the kernel maintainers for the Fedora project uh, here at Red Hat. I've been at Red Hat now um, a little over three years now, and um, I have a bachelor in computer science and. But um, from my first experience at open source, you hear a lot of people talk about their first computer experience. It's usually something like an Amiga or you know, 360. Well, I grew up with Macs, which is not something you always think of as being very programmable. But um, when I was in high school, I got the first computer that was actually my computer. And it was running Mac OS X. And I was actually really excited because it had this really cool thing called a command line. And so um, I got to learn more about that. And, uh, learning about that there was a project called Fink, which was designed to bring Unix-style uh, packages um, to Mac OS X, and that spawned a lot of my interest in going, learning how open source and everything worked, so. Cool. Well, I'm, am I turning to? Maybe I'm turning on? Uh, Mic'd up? Pass. Yep. Yeah. Pass the <laughs> mic. Um, <laughs> I'm Diane Mueller. I'm the Director of Community Development for OpenShift, and I have been with Red Hat for five years now, so I might and the longest yeah. on, on the panel here. That's pretty amazing. And um, my first experience, well, I, I'll, first of all, the giveaway is uh, my Twitter handle is Python DJ. 
So my first experience was um, with open source was using Python libraries back in the day. But my very first involvement in an open source or an open standards community um, was helping develop XML. So I'm dating myself and HTML 1.0. So um, I went, uh, yeah, so yeah, remember those days. No, you don't. You weren't born then. Um, so what can I say? Um, and I worked on an, uh, the first open standard that I worked on was something called XBRL, Extensible Business Reporting Language. None of you should look it up. Um, and I'm, I apologize in advance. But it was the first time that I had to collaborate across multiple um, corporations, um, all the big, back then it was big five accounting firms and us little startups. Um, I'm based in Vancouver. Uh, you know, we're working, on, working together with all these people so, sort of on an open playing field. Mm -hmm. And that was what was really cool is that I could be based in um, Vancouver, Canada, working with someone in New York. And it was just my first sense of the, that collective energy um, being able to build something that was, you know, at the time we thought it was going to save the world and, you know, democratize co corporate reporting, didn't quite do that. But um, it was the first time I really got a taste of the power of collaboration. Cool. So, Diane, what was the first real open source initiative that you were really involved with? Oh, God. Um, I had a job. Um, at Active State, if any of you know that one, a long time ago, and I mentioned the Python thing. I was um, the person who got to look at through all of the modules and all of the Python libraries to make sure that they had the correct license licensing in it for um, for us to make our Active State distribution of Python, and that was really fun. Not, but um, <laughs> it also made me again, and this is probably why I'm in community development. Um, be a, have to reach out to all those different Python developers, people building the libraries and, you know, NumPy and SciPy and all of that good stuff, and meet all of these people um, and talk to them about why they had GPL and other, other issues like that. Cool. Um, so how many of you guys have ever experienced either as a woman or witnessed someone who's a woman experience some sort of challenging situation in tech? Just raise your hand. Cool, great. <laughs> cool. So we're going to talk about what challenges we've experienced. Um, so Christina, if you want to talk about okay. some stuff. You've so I say it's the um, credibilities. So as a woman, I, I started as an essay. So my, my sales would take me to explain a architecture or explain how to, you know, do certain kind of things with certain kind of te technologies, right? So that credibility doesn't stand in front of customers. You know, uh, it takes a lot and a lot of explanation and at least extra effort for me to prove that I'm capable of this technology for them to start believing in me, right? So as a woman, they think you're, you're just a person that kind of just come and sell stuff. You don't have the technical abilities. You don't have the knowledge. They, they, they think you're not that, that sassy on the technology. So that's something I found really difficult. I have to work extra hard to gain the, the trust from every single one of them I work with. So um, I found that's uh, something that I need to spend extra time on. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges I have right now. Lucy, what about you? I, w I would say. <laughs> yeah, uh, I haven't experienced it as deeply um, as Christina. I sometimes do. I would say the where I experienced that. Um, you have to prove yourself kind of thing um, is uh, uh, when I'm doing booth duty, for example, at RSA or wherever, uh, they just don't, they think I'm, you know, just a person who gives out swag. And I'm like, no, I actually know the products and I can talk about the products, things like that. So I have experienced it. Um, I, I think in general, I haven't had a, a huge problems with it. It's just um, here and there kind of thing. But I, I, I kind of, I've learned to have a very thick skin and I don't really care <laughs> what people think. So uh, to me, it doesn't really, okay, whatever, you're some random person, you think that whatever, I don't care kind of thing. Diane, what about you? I'm not sure which microphone, I guess this yeah, microphone's one, one working. One um, I actually think I'm gonna riff on the thick skin thing. Cause um, I think, I've, for many years, and I'm, and I'm talking many years, um, I've been in com working with computers and went to UMass Amherst and computer science, and, um, and I always joke that I had developed 
the reason I was successful, one was I had social skills and could talk, um, and the other was that I had really thick skin. And I think a lot of us, um, women in open source and in computing, um, think we have to develop that thick skin. And it's kind of a shame in some ways um, because we have to have, we're targets for things like, you know, yeah, you're, you're just handing out the swag or you're in marketing or, you know, I mean, you still hear it. And it was, for me, I think um, having to have that thick skin is a burden. Right? It would, and I think there's things that we can bring because we have social skills, because we can communicate, and it's not because we're women. Um, it's, you know, but having to always wear that armor um, is, is the burden, I, I would say. Cool. Um, Lizzie, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so um, I, um, I would say I'm pretty young in my career. My clear young face, um, but I would say one thing too is you know not just to speak about the fact that I have had difficulties as a woman in open source, but um, to speak a little bit more about just the fact that you know regardless of you know the severity of the types of difficulties you have, um, kind of the saving grace that I've found is the community of support from women to women, um, specifically within the open source community. Um, in my time working at Red Hat and in open source, you know, meet, like meeting other. Um, people who are involved in open source, you, you kind of get to realize that a lot of people really want to lift you up. Um, and, you know, I, I don't, I'm only speaking about the open source community and saying that I think that when, you know, you find another woman that's involved in open source in some way, it's kind of this exciting moment where you want to bring them up and make them do better. Um, so to kind of end on a positive note, I've, I've really found that, you know, you've both females and males within open source really want to find a way to kind of lift you up in that community and make you heard, especially since there aren't as many of us. Um, even as compared to traditional computer science, the numbers for women in open source are far less than just women in computer science. So we really want to, you know, make sure that each other is getting brought up and, and lifted to our best potential. Yeah, you bring, that's a, a great point because there's, there's many open source projects out there and some of them are like the one that I came up through the Python and the Django mm -hmm. um, and Linux community to a certain extent um, they really are um, great at mentoring and I've had some amazing mentors over the years and and at Red Hat we we do a lot of that and it's it's one of the wonderful things to see is some you know to, how much people are willing to go out and work with each other and help each other yeah, awesome. Um, so, Laura, how do you find your voice in communities that you work on? Um, so, probably the biggest thing for me in terms of just learning, finding my voice, becoming more confident, is realizing that I have something to share and it's my unique experience. And this comes from across um, everything I've done. Um, just uh, figuring out that there's lots of problems that I've solved that other people haven't solved before and that it's good to share it. And also that it's okay to ask questions and that is an important part of learning um, and growing. Uh, another big part I think has been to help express myself has been um, starting a blog and just writing about what I work on, which is a great way to just talk about a hard problem I've solved. And the best part about my blog is that it is literally my blog. I can talk about whatever I want. And if people don't like it, that's you know their problem. And it's a good way to practice um, writing skills and uh, moving on. And um, I think a great part of find, finding my voice has also been um, learning to lift people up and help other people, which is you know a great way to help um, continue things up. So um, on that note, uh, Mary, would you like to share? Yeah, um, so I definitely agree with the blog posting. That's one of the main things that has really helped me to find my voice at Red Hat and within the open source community is blogging first about the things that I know and the things that I can share. Um, the first time I solved some really hard development thing with Camel and Spring, I was like, why have I not seen this information before? Why is it not out there? Um, so that's been a great way for me to give back to the community and really find my voice within open source. Um, and I feel like that's also been a way that's really built my confidence to be able to stand in front of a customer and be confident that I know what I'm doing or that I have the community behind me that I'll be able to find the information if I don't know it right now. Um, in addition, we touched on mentorship a bit, and I think that's been something that's been great for me to be within at Red Hat as well, is you know, mentoring someone else, and I also am learning from them and that situation. Um, so Diane, how has open source evolved since you first got started? Are we talking back in the dark ages? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
So, um, so like I'm from the really the deck vax. You, yeah, we're talking ages ago, the cool age, right? You know, when you got a computer, it was never mind. Um, but anyway, it's it's an actually an, an interesting evolution because I think in the beginning it was almost revolutionary. You know, uh, Richard Stallman and the free software movement and all of that. It was you know it was like we we're doing something that was going to change the world, and it did change the world. But now um, we see foundations and big corporations, you know, putting um, engineers like Red Hat working directly on open source and collaborating out in the open. And it really has changed that collaboration um, has has seeped into every corporation, um, and that's that's huge. That's like everybody is living and breathing and realizing that open source is very important. So it went from that kernel of an idea um, to something that is an essential part of every business um, in the, you know, in the globe. Awesome. Laura, anything to add? Yeah, I, I think for me it's that I haven't been doing open source, um, you know, as long as you, Diane, but one thing I have noticed is, is that um, there's been a lot more acknowledgement is, is that it's not just about the code. There are so many different things and ways you can contribute to open source and I think it's great we're finally beginning we're, we're really acknowledging that that's necessary and that even if you are working on code, um, code is about people ultimately, so you need to be able to deal with that and not just think about the technical impact, but the non-technical impact as well. Cool, so to build on that, um, Christina, as a woman in technology, what advice do you have for those interested in pursuing a career in this area? Yeah, so being in this very challenging world for so long, my only advice is my only advice is to just be yourself. You know, <laughs> after all that, you know, I've I've been through this stage of dressing myself like myself like a man, right? So I've been through that stage of you know dressing the jeans and the t-shirts, you know, just go out with my ponytails. I look like some geek, so they would trust me more, <laughs> you know, all that. And then I started to find that I'm not happy with what I am right now. I'm I'm not like the person that with like de that geeky kind of feel. So I kind of just went back to myself, you know, talked to myself. You know, I can do the same thing either without and with the geeky, you know, stuff and the style and look, look and feel. So I kind of just went back, you know, and do the things I like. Like, like blogging, and I do a lot of videos on YouTube, you know, teaching people how to use open source and all that, and I found my passions in that. So, you know, just look into yourself, what things that encourage you, that makes you feel really good at yourself, and then just keep doing it, and, you know, um, so with, with the community, with all the open source, it's, it's a big, it's so big that there's so many things that need to be done, right? So you can always find your place there, right? So that's my advice. I know it's very vague, but that's how I really feel inside right now, <laughs> right? Lizzie, what about you? Um, so one thing that I would say that's kind of my advice from kind of my experience being in open source is if you, you know, stand up and actually be heard. Because um, a lot of times, like, I, I find myself falling into imposter syndrome probably every day of my life where I, I wonder, like, how did I get here? What am I doing? Like, am I really qualified to be here? Um, and a lot of that stems from the fact that I look around me and I don't see as many females around me. So I wonder, okay, should I be here? Like, this is kind of weird, but I've found that, especially, like, over the last couple of years, being able to actually, you know, stand up, share my thoughts, and realize that I am not only qualified to be here, but I'm qualified to teach others how to get here, too. Um, it's a really powerful feeling, and it also is what's going to bring more women into our industry, is if we stand up, and we actually share our thoughts and we actually share the things that we're passionate about and we're interested in, we're gonna start to see a chain reaction where more women will feel confident. They'll look over and say, okay, well, there might not be a lot of women here, but she's here and she's doing it, so I'm gonna do it too. And then suddenly it won't be a minority anymore. So that's my advice. Um, one thing I have to add on that with um, kind of standing up is if you aren't sure and you are feeling like an imposter, find that community whether male or female or whoever it is that you can ask for feedback from and then you'll find out okay you are doing great and maybe there's nothing you need to do other than stand up and speak or if you have areas to improve people will t be able to tell you that and you have the opportunity to get that feedback and grow from there what about you Diane I, I'm gonna riff on what Christine was saying I, and I think if you bring your authentic self to um, your conversations and to um, when you speak up and you speak out and you don't try and like I'll wear the hat, I'll wear <laughs> this. But uh, you know, I think what I've seen over the, the past 
20, 30 years that I've been in computing is, is this ability for us to um, connect with other people with different experiences, be out, be um, proud, and, you know, be stand up um, for what we believe in, um, in our communities, and we get supported. It's actually um, been pretty wonderful, but when we're not our authentic selves, if we don't um, present ourselves as we want to be seen and, and, and interact with people, that's when um, the imposter syndrome pops in and, and other ways. And I think the real important thing is for you to feel um, comfortable in your communities. Um, work with, uh, if, you, if you're not, work with the folks that are around the code of conducts that are in the different communities. Reach out to other people and talk to them. But you should always feel like you should be bring your authentic self to all your conversations and to your work. And I think that's the big, big piece of advice I'd give. And I haven't always done that. <laughs> so um, I think that's, that's a lesson that I've learned um, over the years. Laura, what about you? Um, the biggest thing I would say is, is that don't be afraid to take that first step or make that first contribution, whatever it is. Um, it's always going to feel nerve-wracking, and I mean, I'll be honest and say is, is that even doing contributions to this day still makes me a little nervous just because you're still putting yourself out there and um, you know, having people judge whatever you're doing. But the fact of the matter is, is that things are probably going to be okay. Um, and there's lots of um, good ways to go out there. Again, people talked about um, mentorship as well. Find a mentor. Um, uh, outreach, I'm going to give this a plug maybe multiple times, but um, Outreach is a fantastic program. It gives, um, uh, it pairs underrepresented people in tech with uh, m mentors for a paid internship experience to get a chance to really make that um, contribution and have an impact that way. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Awesome. Lucy, what about you? Yeah, I would also say, you know, it's important to be yourself. Um, don't think that just because you're a woman uh, that you shouldn't be hanging out with your guy coworkers. I think that most people uh, have good intentions, I would, th I would say, including my male coworkers. And um, I, I've learned, I, naturally, as a personality, I don't really have a filter. But I, in the beginning, you know, when I um, was in engineering school and computer engineering, I would try to be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't you know, it's, be that blunt or whatever and, you know, things like that. Or maybe do they want me to hang out with them if all these guys are going to a, to the bar for a beer? You know, do they really want me to crash this? I, and at, over, over the time, I, I, I just realized, you know what, you know, who cares? I'm just going to, I'm just going to say what I feel. I'm going to do what I think is right and I'm going to voice my opinion and, and then I'm also going to have a beer with them. If they don't want my company, then you leave, right? <laughs> so that's kind of the, my attitude. Very cool. Um, so, Christina, what keeps you excited about working in open source specifically? It's all the feedback that you got from, um, from everybody, right? So, when I started doing blogs, I got people asking me questions. I, I started all my self esteem a lot, a lot bigger. And then it's all about, you know, so when I, so after that, and I got started to talking to some of the project leads in the community, and they started to approve your work. So that is another great thing that happens to me. So I, I was thinking like, all the things I've done was being approved by this master or this project leader, that makes me really happy. So that keeps me working and working. And then I started doing video blogs and all that and they, all the feedback just comes in and I feel that's very satisfying for me at least. So that keeps me going and creating all this content, right? So that's the greatest thing for me, yeah. Very cool. Uh, Lizzie, what about you? Um, I think for me the big thing is I'm a huge people person, and I love that the culture of open source is to collaborate and to work with other people. I love working with my coworkers. I'm, I feel like I'm constantly the person that wants to talk to other people, talk through solutions, get people excited about talking about things. Um, so that's one big part of it. And then the other big part, too, is there is kind of this, not a, a, it's not a barrier, but kind of this fear of being in open source where you're like, ah, maybe I don't know enough to be able to contribute. But there's always kind of, you know, everybody experiences that moment, and then there's that moment where you realize you did contribute, and it was a very valuable contribution, and people are now asking you for help or want to work through solutions with you. And it's that moment where you realize that you're actually valued um, with it, like for the work you've done for the community, and that's technical or non-technical, but just that feeling when you realize like you've made a difference in some way, um, it's really impactful, and I think that it's what keeps a lot of people going and wanting to make the world a better place in general. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that and build off of that. I think the first time I ever made a contribution, it was something in camel documentation. 
and it got posted and I realized, man, this is going to reach a lot of people. And I think that's something for me that is really exciting is when you contribute to open source, it is available to everyone and they can get it regardless of if, you know, the enterprise has a big uh, financials to pay for something, they can get it when it's open source or someone in their garage who just wants to code something can use it and it can reach them too and I think that's really awesome and to, it, it doesn't matter whether it's documentation or code, you can have that impact regardless of how you're contributing. Diane, what about you? So, so I think the thing that keeps me excited about open source is how many new Oh. <laughs> I, I just talk loud naturally, but I think the thing that keeps me excited about open source is, is this two things. It's one is so many new projects keep coming up. And there's, you know, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, in machine learning and AI on OpenShift, and um, phenomenal things are happening in the world today, and they're happening in the, in the open. And being able to be part of those conversations and the stuff that I learn from people um, that they're willing to share with me um, and it's very, very exciting for me to, to see all the new stuff and the new things that, that keep coming out. Um, what really is I'm most passionate about now is mentoring and being able to give, give up the microphone, give the podium to other people and help um, other people get, find their voices and find their ways of being, um, contributing to these projects. and. That's, you know, so it's sort of a twofold thing for me is one, because when you do that, when you reach out and you mentor somebody working on a project, they're basically telling you something new. You learn something new from everybody. So the opportunity to mentor people and to learn about new projects is really, you know, wonderful um, mm -hmm. and the thing that keeps me going. So um, I'm excited just for all the new technology that's coming out that is going to be open just because I think we've basically established that open source has won. It's here to stay. So pretty much um, all, all sorts of projects and all companies are coming out with new things. Um, I was at the Women in Open Source lunch yesterday and I sat at a table with a woman who was working on the Open Compute Project and it was really, you know, this, that it's been something that I had uh, heard about and I, I get excited when I hear about these um, new projects out there. So it's basically everyone's coming to the table um, with, with a, a new project or a new idea and you really get to hear um, what everyone is working on and I'm excited to get the chance to possibly work on that. Yeah, I mean, what I like about it is the fact that you get to work with people that you m maybe not would have never had a chance to work with. Um, the diversity in the community is um, is also is very cool. I also um, think that you know there's a reason why companies don't have two people or three people uh, working there. There's, there's a group of people, and what I realized, you know, working in a technical field for like 15 years, is that you achieve more when you work together. You you as an individual won't necessarily you'll pr maybe you'll produce something good, but as a group, as a you know a group of people with different skills that they bring to the table, you achieve something awesome. And I've uh, experienced that multiple times. That's what I lo love about working in open source. That ties into our next question a bit about um, how have we witnessed open source concepts in the workplace? Do we think it has influenced them versus a more traditional workspace? Do you have something, Diane? Not always. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I think open source, um, like when it first came out, like I said earlier, it was like revolutionary. It was a political thing. Now it's a cultural thing. You know, we talk at Red Hat about the open organization and the open culture. And, and we, you know, there was a time when, you know, IBM, you'd never even think about, you know, working with someone from IBM if you were over at HP or DEC or Wang or all those other antique companies <laughs> that are no longer with us. But you'd never even think about it. I mean, I come, I was born in a world that was completely proprietary and you guys have all grown up in open source and that's a huge shift and that has changed the way we are willing to work across corporate boundaries, of course, um, across global boundaries and cultural boundaries and I, I think it's, it's always been for the better. Awesome. Um, anyone else have anything to add for that one? So I, I think one of the biggest things um, in seeing open source is, is that this idea about speaking your mind and constantly p 
putting yourself out there to express what you want. And that's really what I, what I think I've, I've seen a lot, especially within Red Hat about in terms of there's a very strong culture about, you know, I have an idea, I want to present it to the world and sharing that. So, and I, I think it's, it's taken a, a lot to sort of figure out how to make that manageable just because um, making open source work for everyone to make sure it actually is inclusive and it's beneficial to everyone takes some work. So I, I think that's the real thing is that with trying to bring open source culture to the to the workspace is, is that you figuring out exactly how can we take the idea is that I have an idea I want to share it with everyone and make sure it actually gets heard and everyone actually gets heard.